Hello everyone, welcome back with me Nathan. So just yesterday, Google updated their Firebase Studio so that now it uses Gemini 2.5 Pro for creating applications. If you didn't know already, Firebase Studio is Google's AI-powered app builder that you can use to create apps with AI for free. It was released about a month ago and many people don't like it because it's very clumsy and the result is just not that good. But as I have said in my previous video, Google has a history of making a very bad first launch. Just look at their AI model. When BART first came out, it flopped really hard. But now, BART is ranked number one in LM Arena. They also changed the name to Gemini, which is far better than BART, but that's just my personal opinion. So now that Firebase Studio is powered by Gemini 2.5 Pro, the results are said to have improved a lot. The apps it generates follow modern web design principles and layouts, and it actually look pretty solid now. There are many examples already created by the community to show this improvement. For example, here's an interactive music tutor app which was built in less than 10 minutes. It came with a lesson catalog to help beginner, intermediate, and advanced users to learn to play a musical instrument. Let's play this for a moment. And there it goes, it was said that Gemini automatically figured out which JavaScript libraries to use for piano sounds. The app seems to be able to teach violin lessons as well, but I can't find the link to the app, so I can't verify for myself. If you find the link to this app, do let me know in the comment section. Thanks. And here's another app created within 10 minutes. It's a social media collaboration app that can manage social media posts for an organization. You can see all these demos in the Firebase Studio blog, which I will link in the description. But right now, let's test Firebase Studio and see for ourselves if it's really that good. Alright, let's get started and see how good Firebase Studio is today. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can go to firebase.studio and then click on the Get Started button or the Try Firebase Studio button over here. You will probably be asked to log in using a Google account if you haven't already. And after that, you will see the main dashboard of Firebase Studio like this. On the left side is the main prompt text box from which you can send an initial request to the studio just like many other AI app builders. On the right side is where you can see your previous apps if you have created one before. And at the bottom you can create workspaces, I have explored them all in my previous video so you can take a look at that if you want to. Alright, let's begin. For this demo, we're going to use one of the prompts provided by Firebase. So if you click on this more sample prompts button, you will see a few options. Here, I'm going to select the ERP dashboard option. So it creates the prom, uh, build a basic ERP for small businesses with a dashboard showing revenue, expenses, and profit, plus a calendar for appointments. I'm just going to add use white and orange color scheme over here. Now that everything is good, so let's cook some app. Just like before, Firebase Studio will first generate a brief showing the name of the app and the features that will be added and some styling guidance. To revise the app, you can send an instruction with the chat interface over here. For example, I want to change the name to ERP board and remove AI powered insights. The AI will then update the brief. You can also click on the edit button over here to manually change anything in the brief if you want to. But it's looking good for now, so let's start building this app. Give it a second. And then the studio will start generating the app. It will create the necessary files and write the code in it. You can actually leave the website right now and come back later because it takes some time for Gemini to completely generate the app. I will skip ahead to when the app is finished. Okay, so here's the app generated by Firebase. At first glance, the UI seems better than the previous version, so let's look around. In the dashboard, there are panels, a bar chart, and then two more panels. The panels seem to be static here. Let's go to the appointments menu. Okay, so here's the appointment interface. Uh, the layout seems to need a bigger space, so let's resize a bit. It's still not fit the screen, so let's click the open in new window button over here and open the app in a separate window. Uh, there is a warning here, but this is the link from Firebase Studio, so let's click ignore. I think Google should fix this redirect. Okay, here we can see the calendar fit the screen. Let me adjust this slightly. Alright, 
Now let's select a date, 14 May, and then click Add New. Um, alright, this model should be scrollable, but it isn't, so the buttons are out of the screen right now. We can fix that later. For now, let's add the appointment. Um, meeting with Meta, date is set, time is set, so click on Save. Uh, it says date is required, but it's already there. Maybe let's click it again. Okay, now it's working. Appointment edit, so let's select 15 May, and there's the appointment. We can edit or delete the appointment with these buttons, but let's not do that for now and go back to the dashboard. Um, here the appointment is still 5 and not changed to 6. I think all the data in the dashboard is static. It's not reflecting the actual data. Next, let's add some revenue. Okay, here's the revenue screen. I will add project from Google, add some numbers, add the date, click add revenue. Now the revenue is added. Back to the dashboard. And yeah, the dashboard data didn't change, so it must be static. Um, next, let's go to settings. We'll skip expense because it's probably not connected to the dashboard as well. And here's the settings page, just a few forms and inputs. Uh, dem switching is not implemented yet, so let's disable it. Then manage preferences button. Mm, I think this should be a save preferences instead. Uh, so let's try to change that. Now, one nice thing about Firebase Studio is the ability to point and select an element from the preview that you want to edit so that you don't have to type manually. Let me show you an example. First, click on the select tool over here. Then, click the button. A text box will pop up here, and you can describe the change to make. Like, change the label to Save Preferences, press Enter, and the studio will focus on that element only. Let's wait a bit as Gemini is working on the element. Once done, the preview will auto-refresh like this. Alright, now the button is Change. As you can see, the Select tool is very useful to pick a specific element to change. Now the last thing I want to try with this app is to remove all dummy data and persist data to a database. So let's go ahead and ask the studio to do that. Okay, it's processing the request. Now, here you can see that Firebase library is being used to utilize Firestore. Firestore is the database product included in Firebase. In this test, I want to see if Gemini can integrate the database into this project without requiring a developer's intervention. Okay, the studio is finished. Judging from the result, I would say the integration is not done yet, as Gemini didn't ask to create a Firestore instance in Firebase first. Here, the page is just loading, um, and it seems everywhere the page is loading. Okay, here we can see the revenue form, so let's try to add one, add amount, and then add date. Click add, and nothing is happening. Click again. Uh, the data in the form just disappears, and no data added down here. So yeah, I think the integration is a failure, probably need to check it out manually. But I'm not going to do that in this video, instead, let's move on to the next project. Alright, next, I want to create another app and compare the result to the old Firebase Studio generation. I want to create a web app that can translate words from one language to another language like Google Translate, Make it with a cool interface and slick animations. I have already created this app before, and I want to see if the new generation is better. Now here's the brief. I will let Firebase build the app, and we will skip ahead to the result. Okay, the app is now finished. Here Firebase asked for a Gemini API key so that the AI feature for translating the language could work. You can manually get the key from Google AI Studio, as I have shown frequently in my previous videos. Or you can simply click the Generate API Key button right here. I will do so to make it easier. Once the key is added, the app is complete, and we can start using it. So let's go ahead and try it out. Select the language to translate, and then add some text to translate. Okay, it's working. Here, the translation happens automatically when the text is typed. There is a loading indicator on the translation text box here, making it look intuitive. There is also the swap language button over here, but I think the original language must be a specific language instead of auto-detect. Uh, yeah, it is. Now we can swap the languages. 
but the text below is not swapped as well. I think it should be swapped, but it should be easy to revise later. Overall, I think this new app is better than the old one, and uh, let me show you here. Here's the old generation by Firebase Studio. As you can see, the generation is more simple, and after putting the text to translate here, we need to click the translate button for the app to work. The original and translated text boxes are also stacked vertically, which can be confusing, while the new generation here is more similar to Google Translate with two boxes stacked horizontally. We can probably tweak this app more to improve it, but I will leave it at that for now. So to conclude, I think this Firebase Studio is definitely better in front-end web development for now, thanks to the new Gemini 2.5 Pro, the studio makes it super easy for you to prototype any sort of app, and you can iterate on the prototype with the AI chat box and give context to the AI using the select tool. That being said, I feel the generation takes a lot of time, and many parts may need to be revised, such as a model that can't be scrolled. One thing that is still lacking though is the ability to use real data and a database. As Firestore is a product of Firebase, I thought they would already integrate the database to Gemini, but as of now, it seems we still need to manually create a database instance in Firebase console before hooking it to the app created in the studio. I'm sure this will be improved in the future, and since Firebase Studio is completely free to use for now, it will be a great option for people who want to try creating apps with AI without breaking the bank. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Firebase Studio upgrade? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify tech topics so that you can master them easily. So make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting or useful. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, and all the other good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.